Hi, I'm Nan Simonson, and I'm about to do some cooking this afternoon. I do that. All of a sudden, I'll get the urge to try something new. And I have some beans that I made that are my, I'm going to say my favorite bean. And I wanted to do something with them, so I looked up several recipes. I became, or I, I created an amalgam of those recipes. And we're calling this the Scarlet Runner Bean Ragu. Uh, however, you can use cannellini beans. I guess you could use um, garbanzo, but I don't think I would. I think the cannellini beans would lend themselves to it. But you'll see why I love the Scarlet Runner Bean. But I'm going to get something started because this pot is very, very hot. And what I have here, this is a leek. Leeks have a different flavor than an onion. All onions, garlic, scallions, shallots, leeks, chives, um, green onions are part of the allium family. And they are, well, part of the allium family, which is the onion family. We'll call it the onion family. And they have similar traits. So you can interchange. You could use a regular white onion here, in which case what I've put in is about, I'm going to say two cups. So that would be like two big onions or one really big and one medium onion. Um, and I put it in this hot pan. This pan, before I put these onions in it, had nothing in it because unlike every recipe I looked at to make any kind of a dish that uses a, 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 um, a base of sauteed onion and garlic and carrot and uh, anything like that, the French call it a mirepoix, uh, if you use that kind of a combination. Every one of these recipes called for oil. Two tablespoons, three tablespoons, four tablespoons. Some people, I'm thinking someone in particular, says, oh, just drink the stuff. No need. Save yourself a few calories and don't do that. And I think when you put a lot of oil in things, it's the first thing that hits the tongue. It coats the tongue. I think that it dulls our taste for really pure flavors. I haven't put oil in my cooking for almost three years. When I went whole food plant-based, I was inspired by Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, no salt, oil, or sugar, from uh, Dr. Um, McDougall at Truth, uh, well, Dr. Mc, is it Dr. McDougall, who he'll, he'll add a little oil to some things, but, um, Anyway, a number of the doctors on a whole food plant-based diet are very aware of how difficult it is to stay on point in terms of um, how we're eating, how much we're eating. If we douse our food with salt, oil, and sugar, three things that make it very hard for us to stop eating. Those are chemicals that are light up our brain and it makes it hard to know when to stop. In addition to that, and if you've heard my videos, you're thinking, oh boy, here she goes. <laughs> In addition to that, the um, oils are very high. The processed oils are very high in omega-6 fatty acids. We are most of our bodies on the SAD diet, standard American diet, are very low on omega-3s, incredibly high on 6s. How do we bring them back into uh, sync, um, a ratio of 3 to 1, 3 6s to 1, 3, or um, 1 to 1, 1 uh, omega-3 to 1 omega-6? We cut back on all the oils because, and unfortunately, they're in all of our um, processed foods. You look at any recipe, they say add oh, canola oil, safflower oil, corn oil, soy oil. I love soy, but not the oil. Now, what I'm doing is adding my oil substitute because 
what was happening is I was getting some browning. Now, I have garlic I'm going to put in here because a miracle I would also have garlic along with the onion. But if you put onion, sorry, garlic into a hot pan, it burns. When it burns, it's bitter. The onion has enough moisture that that's not going to happen. So leek has, and that's what got me started on the whole thing about alliums, leek is an onion, but it's, it has a very delicate flavor, a lovely bouquet almost, um, much milder than a globe onion. And I love using it. You can use them in thin slices, raw, and cut them in half, clean them out, because they are layer upon layer upon layer of, um, of onion. And you can kind of see how the layers have sort of pushed up, but the whole thing is layers on layers. I'm gonna put this one back in the refrigerator so I didn't want to cut it up. But let me show you what's happening. So that's why I chose me. I buy these from Trader Joe's for a few dollars, and there's two of them per bag, so I'll even put it back in this bag. Okay. And I'll put that back in the refrigerator. Okay. As this is cooking, and I'm adding a little bit of my oil substitute, which is nothing but a little bit of vegetable broth, and the vegetable broth, I make, you can buy it, but I make it from my um, scraps of vegetables. And I talk about that in why, um, in my cooking class. Go to nansimmonson.com, that's my website. Click for the YouTube channel, and I have lots and lots of videos there. Okay, so what's happening here is I'm getting a nice browning. Oh, it's not too hot yet. I'm getting a nice browning, and, um, the flavor is fantastic. Then I wanted to show you a fun little tool. This is a Tupperware chop and prep. You can get it from a Tupperware lady. You can get it from Amazon. I had a huge head. I like buying the big heads of garlic. It's easier to peel them. And these cloves are, look how big some of these are. For example, look at this one. That's a big clove of garlic. And yet there's some teeny ones. And so when something says use a clove of garlic, what do they mean? What I came up with is I chop it in advance. I'll peel the entire head. I actually have a YouTube video on how I peel my garlic quickly. And if I'm doing an entire head rather than sitting on it with a chopping board and chopping, chopping, sorry for the noise. Okay. Ta -da. Yes. I'm going to push some of it. Oh, you know what? That's a here. I'll push some of it off the cover. And look what I have. I have chopped garlic. I'm going to add four cloves. And what I did is I figured out by measuring all of this that one tablespoon of chopped like this is sorry, three teaspoons. So I'll put a little more, like a lot more because I love garlic. And when garlic is cooked, it becomes sweet. You burn it, it's bitter, okay? So I'm done with that. Now what's gonna happen is I'm going to use a little spatula, like the one here, it's kind of narrow. And I'm gonna scoop all of that into this little jar that I keep in my refrigerator. And when I need garlic, that's what I go to. And that'll last me for the week. Okay, so add a little bit more broth because it just cooks away very quickly. And now I'm going to add the next ingredient, which is a pound and a half of sliced mushrooms. And then I'll get to my beans as this is cooking. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more about my scarlet runner beans. Okay, now you know what happens if, you're, if you like mushrooms, you know what happens with mushrooms, when you cook them, what, what happens? They weep. They, they let go of a lot of moisture because a mushroom has a massive amount of moisture in it. I'm using a cup and a half of sliced mushrooms. I put the stems, the stems were kind of tough and 
um, they were kind of dry, and so I threw them into the bag of my bra uh, clippings, along with celery and the celery bottoms, carrot, um, uh, when I peeled carrot, carrot, and uh, zucchini ends, and onion roots, and green onion greens at the very end, just on and on I saved things. And then when the bag is full, a one gallon Ziploc freezer bag, I'll throw it in this pan actually, cover it with two inches of water, cook it for about an hour, and then I have broth, free broth. Okay, I'm letting these mushrooms, I should have shown you again the um, onions, but they were, they were golden brown. Now I have the mushrooms here. They are going to, I mean, I'm going to cover it right now and let them weep a little bit more um, effectively. Okay, so let me tell you about these beans. I get, I like Rancho Gordo. I go straight to their website. They're pricey. You can go to Amazon and look for Scarlet Runner beans from different organizations, uh, meaning companies. Um, Rancho Gordo does a lot of, they don't spray, they're not organic, but they don't spray, they do heirloom beans, they're dated so they give you nice fresh new crops and they cook consistently well. Well, why do I like a Scarlet Runner beans? Well, for one thing, they are gorgeous. Look at that. They actually are kind of, well, are modeled to pink and gray, just a great looking bean. But look what happens when you soak one of these little cuties. Look at that, look what happens. Now that is a big bean. Uh, mm, it's a, I'm sorry, now I'm gonna spit on you. <laughs> it's a mouthful, wow, that's so good. Mm. I cooked them like I do garbanzo beans. So if you go to my cooking channel, Look for yummy Instant Pot garbanzo beans. The garbanzos I cook 18 minutes. The Scarlet Runner beans after soaking them overnight, that's eight to 12 hours and then done. Um, drain the water, put them in the Instant Pot, follow my directions. And the garbanzo beans and the way I cook these, I cook them savory. In other words, I don't just use water. I use water and then some, what we call a bouquet garnet, um, some thyme, some bay leaf, um, some onions, some celery, some uh, carrot, not all chopped up because I want to be able to fish it out of there right away um, and drain it and have nice clean beans rather than beans that are all kind of messed up by things in there. But see what I have now, after I cooked a pound this pound, after soaking it and cooked it, I ended up with four, a little more than four cups, two of these. One of them went into a one quart Ziploc freezer bag in the freezer, and I'm able to just shake those out. I can put some in a container, defrost them, and that can go on a salad, that can go on some other soup. They're so big and hefty, they're fun to have even, um, Oh, scattered on top of like a cream soup. Uh, I have a pumpkin soup that I just served recently and put a few of these on there. Ooh, it was really fun because it was very unexpected. They were just kind of floating on the top of this orange soup. I'm gonna open this because I'm seeing the steam, which means that, yep, they're doing exactly what I thought they would do. The mushrooms have begun to weep. See, really wet. Now, I wanna stop that because what I'd like to happen is I'd like to concentrate their juices and then I'll put the rest of the ingredients in this red root. This is a really fast recipe. Now, quite often when I'm doing something like this, I get this inspiration. We had, I had been gone a good part of the day, came in, thought I'm gonna do something with my soaked, cooked Scarlet Runner beans. Let's look up a rango. I had the mushrooms, they had to be used because I bought them, oh gosh, four or five days ago, a, a pound and a half. You can get organic, crimini, brown or white, um, and the brown mushrooms are just a more mature white mushroom. 
um, white button. And um, I got these at Costco. I always buy two boxes at a time because I can't find them at a better price for organic anywhere. And so I always did those. But they, they needed to be used. So I thought, okay, I'll do this. And I love to cook, and it's a fun thing to, to do. I'm going to add in here, as this is cooking, I'm going to add some herbs de Provence. H-E-R-B-S, herbs. <laughs> or herbies. <laughs> herbs de Provence. Herbs de Provence. And that is a combination of thyme and quite often tarragon and maybe some rosemary. Um, the, the flavors of the Mediterranean. And, hmm, that's lovely. I could have put just plain thyme. I could have put tarragon. Tarragon is an herb that many of you wouldn't have. One of the recipes called for just tarragon. And it has a bit of a, um, a, a fennel flavor. And fennel is a bit of a licorice flavor. Well, my husband doesn't like that. And it's rather predominant. So quite often in these seasonings, it doesn't mean if you don't have a seasoning, they shouldn't make the recipe. It just means the recipe won't have that flavor, but it will have another flavor. Could have used basil. I could have used a Burberry um, combination, which is chilies and some other Middle Eastern flavors, sumac and things like that. I think sumac is in Burberry. So see, this is nice and dry. Look at that. Oh, I love a ragu. So what I was going to say is quite often I do this and I do it for dinner. Hey, I'm making dinner and, you know, I'll be serving this in just a little while. Well, that's not the case because I have dinner set out, ready. I always have things that I make much more of, put it aside four or five days later. I'll heat it and that's another meal. The rest of it had gone into the freezer. so days, 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 weeks later I'll have it for dinner. That's what you want to do if you make the mess, make it worth cleaning. So this is going to give me several meals. Well that was already out, it needed to be eaten, so this is just going to sit overnight before we eat it and then I freeze the rest of it. Um, so what I'm adding now is I'm adding some, I grow chilies in my garden and I had some poblano chilies that turned red and the poblano is not a really hot chili, but I like some heat in things. So is this is this a, a addition that you would normally see in a ragu? Uh, ragus are usually, I'll say, French-based. Yeah. But I want some heat. I got some heat. I'm going to throw in some celery. Why? Celery adds kind of a, it, well, celery adds its own flavor, including salt. It, it is a more more um, salty, uh, one of the more salty of our vegetables. Then, and this is getting, see this is completely dry now. The, the mushrooms have wet. And this is, I could stop this now and use this as a base for, oh, if tonight's meal was uh, my big um, purple, Japanese sweet potatoes that I heat up, split open, white flesh inside, purple skin. I could spoon that on there and put some of my tofu sour cream and oh my gosh, what a great meal. And I have broccoli ready to steam. Perfect meal. Whole food, plant-based. If you haven't figured that out and you're new to anything I do, that's who I am. For three years now, whole food, plant-based, no animals. Um, are in any way used in my food, not butter, cheese, dairy, cat, well, I was going to say cats and dogs, oh man, um, <laughs> sheep, cows, pigs, goats, nothing. I used to, but three years ago, I improved my health and my husband's health dramatically by saying we're going whole food plant-based and the planet needs us to. So I'm going to take my beautiful, cooked, great, I'm going to use the word meaty to the mouth because you take a bite of this in this, I might just be eating a big piece of chopped meat, but I don't, shouldn't use that as an analogy because I don't want any big fat chopped meat. But if somebody is transitioning and trying to go plant-based, why not? Oh, look at that. Big, giant chunks in there. I'm going to add a 
what is that, 28 ounce can of crushed fire roasted tomatoes. That just means that they were roasted and the skins got a little blackened, which gives them some additional depth of flavor. And I could have used diced tomatoes. I could have used fresh tomatoes. All right. Now I'm gonna to add to this two medium-sized zucchini. They were pretty nice size. This is about, oh, where's my little measuring cup? I'm gonna say this is about two cups. You can watch as we measure it, as I throw half of them on the ground. No, it's not. This is about, I'm gonna say three cups of chopped zucchini or two medium. You know what, it kind of doesn't care. I have got zucchini all over. Uh, it, 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 I mean, doesn't matter because it just means you have more or less. So that's how I cook. Now, here's the other thing I'm gonna do. I didn't know how moist this was going to be. Remember, I kind of combined a bunch of recipes. And I want a looser ragu. I don't want a thick, goopy stew. Uh, we like broth in our soups. We like very brothy soups. We will both like this much better if we have, if we have broth. And one of the recipes included a lot of broth. And so I'm gonna go more toward that. And all of this will be in the recipe. When I type it up, I'll have known what I preferred. You know what I did? I defrosted, I spoke to you about doing my garbanzo beans in the Instant Pot. Well, I kept the broth for that because there was so much flavorful ingredients. There were so many flavorful ingredients in the garbanzo beans as I cooked them that when I drained them to then freeze them in freezer bags, and I used those all through the month, I kept the broth in two and a half cup two and a half cup um, containers. And I'm gonna add, and I like that, so I'm adding a bean broth to this bean ragu. And I'm gonna do it to the degree that I want this to be. So this is gonna be a ragu that is somewhat like a stew, I think. So I just added Oh gosh, I've just added about a cup and a half. I think it's gonna end up being two cups because I like that. Can you see what I've done? Okay, so what's gonna happen now is this is gonna cook. I may add more broth because what the, the beans have starch as they cook and the whole thing becomes one unified um, recipe. The, the starch is gonna thicken this even further, plus there was starch from the initial uh, broth. And I'm gonna cook it, taste it, um, balance out flavors. I may add some cayenne to it at the very end. I'll put some lemon juice in it. When I do beans, I almost always do acid at the end. It can be balsamic vinegar, it can be lemon, um, the lemon juice. And I'm gonna cook this for about 15 minutes. It might be longer. I need to get the zucchini cooked. Everything else already is. And um, all of that will be on the recipe. And then I'll show you the plated uh, rego. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned something. Put my cover on. This, by, this pan, by the way, is one of my favorite. It has a nice thick uh, multiply bottom that, uh, distributes heat well. It's made by all clad. And I can't let you go without reminding you that I am Nan Simonson, author of Aging Powerfully. The word powerfully is an acronym for 10 lifestyle modalities that will help us age powerfully. I wrote that knowing I was about to turn 70. It was published a couple of days before I turned 70, which was almost a year ago. And um, I think all of us, if we pay attention to what we eat and how we live, can turn the clock backwards and fight what you see all around you, which is what the results of the standard American diet have done to most people. Obesity is on the rise, uh, chronic disease is on the rise. This kind of a meal, 
whole food, plant-based, lots of nutrition, broccoli, a tomato salad, um, cauliflower, cantaloupe at the end of the meal. Perfect nourishment. <laughs> Have a great day because I know I'm going to. Give me a thumbs up and all that stuff people do. Pass it on. Bye-bye. <laughs>